May 11, 1 Samuel 24, 1-25-44 Now it happened when Saul had returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheepfolds by the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Then the man of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him, because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with it, with these words, and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward, went out of the cave, and called out to Saul, saying, My lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, Indeed, David seeks your harm? Look this day, your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you. But my eye spared you and said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for it, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and do not kill you. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancients says, Wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom? Has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore, let the Lord be judge and judge between you and me, and see and plead my case, and deliver me out of your hand. So it was, when David had finished speaking these words to Saul, that Saul said, It is your voice, my son David. And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I. For you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of israel shall be established in your hand therefore swear now to me by the lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house so david swore to saul and saul went home but david and his men went up to the stronghold then samuel died the israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. He had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man 
was harsh and evil in his doings. He he was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent ten young men. And David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shears, your shepherds were with us, and, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away, each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shears and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back, and they came and told him all these words. Then David said to his men, Every young gird on his sword. So every man girded on his sword, and David also girded on his own sword, on his sword. And about four hundred men went with David, and two hundred stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told, told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields. They were a wall to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five shears, five seas, roasted grain, 100 cluster of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys, and she said to her servants, Go, go on before me, see, I am coming after you, but she did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was, as she rode on, don on the donkey, that she went down under cover And there were David and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing has, was missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so, and more also to the enemies of David. If I live one male of all who belong to him, by morning light. Now when Abigail saw, saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my lord, on me let this iniquity be, and please let your maidservant speak in your ears, and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my lord regard this scoundrel Nabal for as his name is so is he Nabal is his name and Foley is with him but I your maid servant did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent now therefore my Lord as the Lord lives and as your soul lives since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand 
Now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. And now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord's fight, my Lord fights the battle of the Lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life. The life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God, and the lives of your enemies he shall sling out from as far as from the pocket of a sling, and it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my lord either that you have shed blood without cause or that my lord has avenged myself or himself but when the lord has dealt well with my lord then remember your maid servant then david said to abigail blessed is the lord god of israel who sent you this day to meet me and blessed is your advice and blessed are you because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand for indeed as the lord god of israel lives who has kept me back from hurting you unless you had hurried and come to meet me surely by morning light no males would have been left to nabal to david received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her go up in peace to your house see i have heeded your voice and respected your person now abigail went to nabal and there he was holding a feast in his house like the feast of a king nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunk therefore she told him nothing little or much until morning light so it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became like a stone then it happened after about 10 days that the Lord struck Nabal and he died so when David heard that Nabal was dead he said blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept my, his servant from evil for the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her face to the earth, and said, Here is your maid servant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail rose in haste and rode on a donkey, attended, a five, attended by five of her, maid serv of her maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was from Galim. Psalm 61 to 5 to the chief musician said to Lily of the testimony, a Micmath of David, for teaching when he fought against Mesopotamia and Syria, Zobah and, Zo and Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. O oh God, you have cast us off, you have broken us down, you have been displeased, you rest oh, restore us again, you have made the earth tremble, you have broken it, heal its breaches, for it is shaking, you have shown your people hard things, you have made us drink the wine of confusion, you have given a banner to, who's, to those who fear you, 
that it may be dis- displayed because of the truth. Salam. That your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. First, John 1, John 1, 29 to 51. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After, after me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus, as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip from Nathanael, Nathanael and said to him, we have found him, and whom Moses in the lo- in the law, and also the prophets, wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Son of Man. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, for your goodness and faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your strength, O oh God. Thank you for your word, O oh Lord, and your word is true, Lord. Give us, Lord, more desire, Lord, to know more of you, God, to love you more, to trust you more, God. Hallelujah. You are great, O oh God. You are amazing. You are wonderful, Lord, and you deserve all the praises, glory, admiration, honor. You're the King of Kings, God of all gods, Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. You are our promise keeper, our great heavenly Father, our personal Savior. You're the same God, O Lord. Hallelujah. 
yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And amen.